did lose um, the love of my life just over two years ago. He passed away July 30th of 2014. It was his 57th birthday, uh, and he died as a result of congestive heart failure. He and I met, actually, we worked together at Foxwoods. I was uh, at Foxwoods for 20 years. I worked in the employee cafeteria as a uh, assistant manager. And he was a cook in the kitchen. And so that's how we came to meet one another. He also grew up in Norwich as I did, but there's a 10 year age difference. He's 10 years older than me, so we didn't exactly travel in the same circles. So we came to meet each other at Foxwoods and it was a friendship which blossomed into more over time. And uh, this was an individual who absolutely taught me how to live. As I say, I was always a very shy person growing up and he pulled me out of that kind of called attention to things that were missing in my life that I didn't even realize were missing. Uh, the only thing I could think of to do was to pray for my life to end because I didn't want to be here anymore. You know, I didn't know how to cope. I was always, I've always been a positive person and all of a sudden I had nothing to look forward to anymore. And so I found myself um, in depression, which I had no experience with because or, you know, I never had a reason to feel that way before. I would post uh, conversations with him as though I were speaking with him because in my mind somewhere I thought if I just put my words out into the universe, he'll hear them somehow. And so that became an outlet for me, just posting my thoughts on social media. And as I did that, uh, people started to respond and say to me, you write so well, you know, we can really feel what you're saying. You should write a book. As a result, the messages that I received from him just absolutely proved to me that he is still with me, that I haven't lost him, that it's different and it's an adjustment and I have to learn now this new form of communication, but that was the point that um, I believe I found my will to go on, was from that point, was from the, um, the hope that I received in that reading. He was one of nine children, so we had um, many siblings and nieces and nephews, and his dad, thank God, is still alive. He just turned 91 uh, last month. Um, and each one of us were grieving differently for this one individual who had impacted our lives in different ways. Myself, personally, I lost both of my parents, um, my mom back in 1996 and my dad in 2005. And um, those grief experiences were totally different from this one. You know, I think it's, it's just a personal thing and it's different depending on the relationship I think that you shared with the person. Um, and so understanding that, when I wrote this book, it certainly wasn't with the intent of it being a manual on how to grieve, because there is no such thing. I never lost the feeling of gratitude for the joy that he brought into my life. And I tell people, even if I had gone into the relationship, which as I said was about three years long, knowing that in three years he was going to pass away and I was going to go through this unimaginable pain, I would still choose it to get that joy that he brought into my life because that's how much he changed me from the inside out. And um, so since then, since I you know, went and had the reading, which was instrumental in bringing me back into the realm of the living, I'll say, um, I have focused on gratitude. I'm grateful for every single moment of my life. I don't oh, yeah. focus on the loss. I focus on what was gained and how much my life was enhanced from the moment he walked into it. And I, I even express gratitude for um, the clarity that has come to me since he crossed over and knowing that he's with me. Did you have a belief in mediums before you I had never really thought about it, to be honest. And when he passed away, I, um, I thought about it and I expressed that to a couple of individuals that I was close to and right away I got the, the backlash of, don't do that. You're playing with the devil. Don't do that, you know. And um, again, my family um, is primarily Catholic and so um, 
you know, you're, you're grown up in a church to believe a certain way. And so that's not to condemn anyone for believing the way they believe, but that was the response I got. So I already had it in my mind I was going to do it. I didn't care what anybody said, but I knew not to share it with any of them anymore because I didn't want to hear the negative. I, I, I wanted to go off on my own and do this. When I would get really sad, she's my little communicator, and she would tell me that, you know, not to be sad because he was right there with us. And there were many times when um, she would just come out with little, with little things and, um, you know, Nani, Mike protects us. You know, just, just out of the blue little stuff and just go right on playing and, and things like that. So I know that there is such a connection. Uh, a big sign for his hearts, and I wear this double heart necklace. Um, this one is always drawing hearts. Hearts, hearts, hearts mm -hmm. all over the place. And one of the things that came through during the reading was uh, she, the medium said to me, what is this with hearts? He keeps drawing hearts. Hearts in the sand, hearts, hearts. What is he trying to tell you? I said, I, I don't know. It wasn't really anything. She said, well, keep an eye out for that. And, and this one right here always mm -hmm. draws hearts. I, I can't even tell you. I go into some of the things in the book, but she, um, yeah, she's my little connection here.